What is going on everyone? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to learn how to use this package called Swift Soup to actually parse out HTML from a web page in native objects. More specifically, we're going to grab the list of articles here on TechCrunch's homepage. So before we jump into things, start by dropping a like down below, hit subscribe if you're new here and into iOS, and let's jump into Xcode. So we are going to start by creating a new project. I'll stick with the app template under iOS. Let's call this, let's just call this TechCrunch since that's what we are going to be parsing. Uh, we can use Swift as a language and for the interface, you can use SwiftUI or Storyboard. I'm just gonna use Storyboard since that's the one people requested. We'll go ahead and toss this onto my desktop and I'll start by full screening Xcode and bringing in the package from file add package. We'll paste this on in and it'll resolve Swift soup. Go ahead and hit add package and we should be good to go just like that. Before we build and run this into a uh, simulator, let's create a new file and we'll call this HTML parser just like that. And we'll create an object in here called HTML parser like so. Also make sure to import Swift soup. This is the object that's gonna manage all the parsing uh, magic for us. So go ahead and select the simulator up here hit that run button, hopefully should be compiling. This is yelling at me because I forgot to add the keyword class. Go ahead and run that once more. And we should see our simulator pop up, there it is. So let me just go ahead and bring it onto this desktop here and we should be good to go. So the first thing that we wanna actually do is get the HTML from a particular website. So in our case, it's techcrunch.com. Now we're not gonna just copy and paste it. We're gonna use a WK web view and actually run some JavaScript to get the HTML out. So let's start by importing WebKit into our view controller. We'll make this final. And let me just create a web view here. So we'll say our web view is a WK web view. And we'll just create it with this anonymous closure here. So here we'll say web view is a WK web view, which takes a config and a frame if I'm not mistaken config will be config, I'll create that in a second. And then here we'll say our config is a WK web view configuration. And we'll go ahead and instantiate this. We do want to also assign the preferences on here, which will be prefs, I'll create this right up above. This will be WK, I believe web page preferences, like so. And on this, the thing that's important to set is the fact that we can run JavaScript. So there is allows content JavaScript, like so, and then prefs will be prefs. Go ahead and do command B, and let's see why this is yelling at me. Let's see, cannot find pref. We call this prefs up above, plural. And it's still yelling at me because I think I screwed up the type. Let's see, cannot do WK web page preferences and WK preferences, okay. Let me change this then, WK preferences. And then there is another JavaScript on here, JavaScript enabled is what I'm looking for. All right, good to go. So now we have this. It does look like this is deprecated in the new versions of, um, of uh, iOS. So we are going to see if there is a, I believe there's another thing called web page uh, preferences. And we'll say this is page prefs, which is the other thing I was adding up here initially. And this will be WK web page preferences. And then page preferences, we want JavaScript to be enabled. So we'll go ahead and do that. We can ignore that warning for the time being. Cool, good stuff. So let's go ahead and add this as a subview, like so. And we are going to load in the website. So we're gonna say, go ahead and load in a URL request with a given URL. We'll create this right up here. We'll say URL is URL with a string. We do need to unwrap it since the URL constructor does give us a optional object back. So we'll say tech crunch.com otherwise we'll go ahead and return we probably want this web view to actually show up also kind of important so let's go ahead and actually uh, just add some constraints to it I am gonna say translates uh, auto resizing masks into constraints to false and then I'll add some constraints here so NS layout constraint activate and let me just set these up real quick so we'll say top anchor is a constraint equal to view safe area layout guide top anchor Copy and paste this three more times. We'll do left, we'll do right, and we'll do bottom. And I do realize I'm going through this pretty quickly, mainly because I wanna to get to the HTML part, go ahead and build and run, but I don't wanna skip over all the setup stuff. All right, cool, so there we have the TechCrunch website loading, cool. 
So once the website has loaded, what we want to do is we want to grab the inner HTML and go ahead and just filter out all those warnings. The way we're going to do that is by using the navigation delegate, which I will assign to self right there. And let me actually assign this before we call load on the URL. We will conform to the particular delegate, so WK navigation delegate. And there is a did finish navigation on here. And what we want to go ahead and do is actually get that HTML now. And the way we do it is by saying web view, and we want to evaluate some JavaScript and then have a closure, the completion handler, to get the actual results back. So let's go ahead and do that. And we should have a completion handler. All right. So the JavaScript we're going to evaluate is going to be document dot let's do body dot inner HTML. That's what we want to get back. And this will resolve it and return it for us, hopefully. And we do get a result and a error. And what we want to verify is that we have our results. So we'll say HTML is result as a string and the fact that the error should be nil. Otherwise, something has gone wrong. So we will return and actually what I will do here is I will actually just print out fill to get HTML or something so we know what happened. Fill to get HTML, put that I in there. Let me just format this a little bit. And now that we've got the HTML, it's time to parse it. So here we're gonna leverage our HTML parser and let's see why this is yelling at me. All right, it's a warning. We haven't used HTML, it's okay. So let's go ahead and create our parser, which will be that HTML parser object that we've created. And let's see, let's go ahead and do weak self here, since we do want to reference that parser. And we are going to say parser, and we're gonna say parse, spell that correctly. We haven't made this function yet, parse HTML, and we'll just do that. So now let's jump into our parser and just define that function in here. So we are going to say func, parse HTML string like so. And just to start off, let's actually just print the HTML. So let's just uh, expand our console here, make sure that we do in fact get our HTML and I just saw it pop up and for some reason it disappeared. There it is, let's see where it is. All right, so there's a bunch of stuff in here that isn't printing and let's just go ahead and actually print out I don't know, got HTML, just like that, because the, co the content of the page is probably quite large uh, by the time that it does in fact load. So let me go ahead and stop this. Sometimes the Xcode decides to not be cooperative. All right, go ahead and give it a build and run. And we do expect our particular app to launch. Just taking a, taking a little bit here, so bear with it. There it goes, all right, cool. We should get a printout of got HTML somewhere here. All right, got HTML, cool. So we definitely have our HTML. Let's go ahead and talk about parsing. So the way we parse is actually remarkably simple and that's the beauty of this package and why I even wanted to talk about it. So we're gonna create a do catch block. And here we're gonna say let uh, document, aka a, a, uh, a document from the HTML that we supply will be try and it's going to be swift soup dot parse and we can specify the HTML right there as a string. So we're going to say HTML and what we are going to say is we're going to say if document, let's see if we can do this in a better way to verify that it actually did parse. So let's go ahead and say uh, document dot char set and I believe this gives us a string back. All right. So let's see char set. Let's go ahead, it's a string encoding actually. So we're gonna say, this is a string describing that. Let me just print this out. If we have an error, we're gonna say, print out a string describing the error. And I will prefix this with error parsing. And go ahead and give that a run. And let's see if we get anything useful out. All right, so we got a printout right there. So we got HTML. And what we actually got as a char set, the character set is Unicode UTF-8, which is in fact what we expect to get. So let's do some cool stuff with this. So by looking at this page, I imagine from my working knowledge of HTML that this is a header tag, perhaps, um, you know, a H2 or H3, maybe these are smaller header tags. So let's actually start getting some elements and let's see 
what we get out. So we can say document dot uh, element, and I believe element is here. So we can create an element. We can get all elements. And what I actually want to get is an element with a particular tag type. So let's see how I can do that. So we can update sibling elements, we can do that. So let's actually get an element by a tag name, but I'm gonna do this on the body because the body itself is indeed an element and we know that we wanna get it out of the body. So we are going to say here that guard let body is going to be that. And unfortunately, a lot of things here are going to be uh, optional. So you do need to you know, unwrap quite a few things by the nature of you know how this framework works, but it does make sense, not a big problem. So we are going to say headers is going to be body. And now we wanna say get element by tag. And if you look at the definition of this, this is going to return elements, uh, which is obviously plural, more than one, and it can indeed throw. So we do want to make sure that we prefix this with try and we do it in the do catch. And what we want to get is, let's do h3, all right? And now this is going to be elements, plural. And we are going to print out string describing headers dot count. And we'll prefix this with headers, like so. We'll actually get rid of this print here. And we'll give this a run. So we should see headers somewhere in here. Let me see, I believe I see it right there. So we got 10 headers, okay, cool. So let's actually get a little more creative with this. So we're gonna say for header in headers, let's actually get something out. We can get the actual text in the header. We can get, we can check if it has text inside of it. Um, I believe we can also get the inner HTML. Let's see how we can actually do that. All right, so we can actually get the HTML out just like that. So let's actually print out a new line, new line, and we're gonna print out the HTML and do new line, new line once more. So let's see, it looks like this is yelling at me because HTML, let's see what this gives me. Looks like it's not a string, it actually, it actually is a string, but it can throw. So here we will do try, and we will coalesce it with just a dash. So go ahead and give that a run, and we should get some uh, information out about those headers. Beautiful, we do. So if we look at our console here, we do see, in fact, that this is optional, and we actually get what's inside of those particular uh, header tags. Now, uh, it's optional because we prefixed it with this try. So what I am going to do is make this a little nicer. So we are going to say our headers here is going to be a collection of strings and we are going to compact map the result of this, and we're gonna say, uh, this is simply going to be $0.html like that, and then we can print out our headers. So what's really cool about this is you can actually scrape and get content out of the web. Um, let's go ahead and do return, and this is try. Actually, don't even need return here. You can actually go ahead and scrape content from the web by using this technique. Um, just be careful of like privacy and whatnot and you know making sure that you don't actually uh, use copyrighted material but what's pretty cool about this is you can see inside of each of these we do have these um these uh link tags with the uh well some of them have actually link tags but not all of them so let's actually see why that is so here is one of them the next one does have a tag inside of it okay startup founders and you can actually put this into like a table view where if you wanna get, you know, build any type of app that doesn't have a particular API for the website, you can actually use Swift Soup to parse things. Now it's a little janky, admittedly, you need to get the HTML, so you do need to load stuff in a browser and, you know, hide the browser, maybe off screen, but I did wanna actually show this because there are a lot of cases where sometimes you do wanna embed HTML into your applications and this is a really good way to parse stuff out instead of dealing with strings and regular expressions and other janky ways. So that is all I've got for you guys today. I will also mention if you are you know, a developer that also works on Android apps, there is a uh, sister framework for this for Java called JSoup that I've used myself that you can use in your Android Studio projects. So that is all I've got for you guys today. Thanks again for watching. Drop a like if you haven't done so already. Leave a comment for that sweet, sweet YouTube algorithm. Any video suggestions, love to hear from y'all. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.